you have your coffee this morning? <laughs> Amen. I'm going to stop there, but I'm not going to ask you to get that coffee. Extra yeah. hour of sleep. Yeah, yeah. You got an extra hour, right? Everybody's still kind of in, in whatever you want to call it. Amen. But it's good to be here this morning. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. You guys be in the house of the Lord this morning. Let's give them a clap. Off. Yes. And I just ask that you bless this congregation. 
bless the city. God bless the community. And God, I pray that you bless every child, every, every young person. And God, help us to help others. Oh, help us to help others, Jesus. Help us to help others. And we the Father, the Son, and the precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name.
I thought Jesus was the problem solver. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Pastor, I got a lot of issues. I thought Jesus was the issue, the person. I, I thought the purpose of getting saved is so we can let God help us. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're going through things or when things is happening, that's not the time to stop. That's not the time to lay down. That's not the time to get depressed. Amen? Amen. Jesus and depression. Jesus and problems. Jesus and issues. That's the we have to give it, we have to give it give it over to God. If we got kids, if we have problems in our family, that's not the time to quit. That's not the time to go into some depression. And then Jesus said, now, you said, Pastor, I I had somebody a few months ago get upset at me because they didn't like the fact that I talked about depression, how that when we get saved, we, we, we're supposed to let God help us with it. Amen. Amen. Somebody actually got upset at me. But I'd like to interest you in something this morning. My Bible says, let this mind be in you. That was also in what? Christ. Salvation means that you have the mind of Christ. Yes. Being saved means that you're thinking like God thinks. Yes. So, okay, something has come to my life and it's trying to drag me down. I'm going to give that to God so that I can focus on being a Christian. Yes, right? Didn't he say, come unto me, all ye that labor yes. and are heavy laden, yes. and I will give you depression. Is that what he said? Yes. I will give you financial in, uh, instability. Yes. Give it, give it. Whatever you're going through, give it to God so yes. you can focus on being a Christian. Amen. You can't deal with it anyway. Yes. Right? And then, what did he say in Matthew 6 and 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? And all these things shall be what? No, all this stuff you're worried about, all this stuff you're concerned about, if you'll just seek the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. God will provide for you. God will take care of you. Mm -hmm. and, and the scriptures prior to that, he said, consider the lilies of the field. Consider the birds. You know how many birds there are in the world? Have you ever seen one die from salvation? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen an animal die from salvation. Mm -hmm. God takes care of them. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. if, God can, if, if God takes care of them, how much more is he going to take care of us? Right? Yes, sir. And last but not least, before we get into it, Ah, uh, yeah, we say, my well, man, he with us, right? Um, believe it, did you pinch it? Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm just messing with you. Know messing with you. Um, I want to share a nugget with you this morning before I uh, go forward. I want to share a nugget with you. How many of you are concerned about I was thinking about this this morning as I was meditating and thinking and how we're living in a society where people are concerned about power. And I've got the answer to it. And, and sometimes you, you, you don't want to say things in church because people get all hot and bothered and all bent out of shape. I'm going to tell you what the answer to power is. Number one, salvation. Yes. You give your heart to God, right? You give your heart to God. I'm talking about really get saved. Mm -hmm. And let God change your life. And once you do that, the second thing you need to do is start paying your tithe. And be faithful in paying your tithe. And I promise you that you that God will, will lead you and God, God will start working with you on how to handle your money. God will start helping you on uh, corralling your, uh, uh, you know, that, that desire to spend when you shouldn't spend. You know, and all these things. He'll start helping you. He'll start showing you how to invest your money. He'll start showing you how to go about your affairs the right way. The Bible says, be not slothful in business. That's what the Bible says. And being saved, God changes your whole mentality. And all of a sudden, 
You start saying, wait a minute, I need, I, I need to get my money, I need to get my finances under control. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. I need, I, I need to get my, I need to take care of debt. The Bible said that, oh no man. Right? Yes. And then all of a sudden, God start dealing with you. You start taking care of your debt. You say, okay, I owe this, I owe that, I owe this. This is the most important thing. This is the next important thing. And with God's help, I'm going to work every day. Every time I get paid, I'm going to take care of my finances the right way. And little bit by little bit with God's help, God's going to help me get out of this. And then when I get done with all of that, the extra money that I have, I'm going to start using it wisely. I'm going to start letting God lead me. I'm going to start letting God direct me. And then the next thing you know, you're in a better place. Yes, but people don't want to hear that. You, you, think these, you think these government people are going to get you out of debt, right? You think these politicians are going to get you out of debt. You better wake up. Now, I'm not saying, you know, hey, vote, do everything you're supposed to do. Be said, you know, two is coming up, go vote and do all that. But at the end of the day, I'm depending on God. Amen. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yes. I'm depending on God. God takes care of me better than anybody in the government will ever take care of me. Now, am I criticizing the government? No, I'm not criticizing the government. The government is good when it does what it's supposed to do. Amen? But quit overstepping and all that kind of junk. But, as a grown man that's been saved, as a grown man that's been saved, I have a wife, I have children, I have grandchildren, I have a family. God helps me in all of those areas. Amen? Amen? As a woman, when you get saved, I was sharing with my wife. I was sharing with my wife, I was reading some, I was doing my Bible reading in the book of Numbers. And do you remember when, um, um, uh, you remember when Korah stood against Moses and God opened up the earth and all the people that, like 250 people, God just opened the earth up and they all went into, went into hell alive. And then God closed the earth up because they fought Moses and stood against Moses. God said, step aside. He just opened the earth up. And they all went in, and then he closed it back up, and on and on and on. But anyway, there were daughters of some of those men that died in that, that went to Moses. And you'll have to read it sometime. I have to, uh, I, 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 I'll just, I'm a, what I'm going to do is, if you ladies want to read up on that, I'll give you the scriptures on it. It is amazing. If you don't think you're important, you're crazy. That's right. If women don't think they're important, you're crazy. Mm. Amen. God loves women. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about in a negative Amen. way. Amen. God loves yes. women. Yes. These daughters, it was like this one man had five daughters. Yes. And they went to Moses at a time when they weren't supposed to get, they weren't supposed to get the property, they weren't supposed to get the heritage, they weren't supposed to get any of that. They went to Moses and they said, Moses, can we get what our, our dad, our dad left behind? Moses said, let me go talk to God about it. Oh, Amen. Uh, oh Amen. You ladies, Amen. you ladies, God bless you, all right? God bless you. You leave it now? <laughs> okay, well, God bless you. All right. It's all good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise and um, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to be a blessing. Right? I'm just trying to be a blessing. Yes, I don't know what I say wrong. What did I say wrong? No. I, I'm saying nothing wrong. No. I'm just going by what the Bible says. Yes, but I'm trying to show you that with God's help you can stand up. Amen. With God's help you can stand up. Amen. And with God's help you can do better than what you want. Yes. But anyway, these five sisters. Went to Moses, right? And they said, look, we want the heritage which they weren't supposed to get. But they went to Moses and said, let me go talk to God. And you know what God told Moses when Moses went to God? And this one, I told my wife, I said, I've never paid this any attention in the Bible. God said, they are right. Yeah. God, God told Moses, they are right. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my goodness. Ladies, I'm telling you. Amen. Sometimes you don't think you're supposed to be this and you're not supposed to be that. Amen. You go to God. You, know, you ain't got this. You know what? I'm, I'm just saying, sometimes we get out here and we do all this stuff. But, 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 but as people of God, we need to go to God. 
And so God tells me, and the Lord said, yet two men, bring them down unto the water, verse 4. And I will try them for, for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee. The same shall not go. All right? So you got 10,000 people standing here ready to go fight the Midianites. And thou shalt not go. All right? So he brought down the people, verse 5. I got just a few more verses, so bear with me. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that laugheth of the water with his tongue as a dog laugheth, him shalt thou set by himself. In other words, if they laugh the way a dog laughed water, put them to the side. All right? Likewise, everyone that bowed down on their knees to drink, you know, bowed down, and likewise, everyone that get down on their knees and drink that way. So if somebody takes up water and laughs like a dog, put them to the side. If somebody gets down on their knees and laughs water, well, you put them to the side. Okay? This is interesting, man. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that laugh, will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go, every man, unto his place. So God took of ten thousand people. He said, Nine thousand seven hundred, you send them home. And I'm going to take the ones that laugh like a dog. And we're going to go, I'm going to take 300 people. And we're going to go and fight. <laughs> uh, do you want to know how many people? Uh, <laughs> you want to know how many people uh, that the Midian Knights was going to fight them with? 135,000. 135,000. All right? And God, and God, and, and as it was, they only had 32,000. And God said, nah, whittle that down. And whittle that down. Got it down to 10,000. Still too many. Go down to the water and let's see how they drink. And you might say, well, why would God do that? Why would God do that? Would y'all listen? Would, would, would y'all work with me in this morning? A lot of people don't understand church work. A lot of people don't understand church. Sometimes we think we do, right? And sometimes you look at me and you say, man, I don't understand what pastor do. I don't understand about the church. I don't understand about this. And everybody have thoughts and ideas which I appreciate, which I respect. And many, many times I take those ideas and those advices and different things. But a lot of times God will take a certain amount of people. This is where I got this vision from. 6,000 in the key drops. Right? And now if God wanted to he could do it a certain way. But as he did get him, he said it's too many. It's too many. And so God gave me this vision some time ago. If just give me one percent, 60, which is one percent of 6,000, I believe we can take the city. Amen. I said I believe we can take the city. And so God began to deal with my heart. Give us 60 faithful people. Amen. But when I say faithful, when I say faithful, they're not just anybody. You see, God didn't just take anybody. There were 32,000 people. They were probably all good people. They were probably all loyal. They probably all had great characteristics. But you when you're talking about foundation, when you're talking about uh, building something and, and, and so that the others can come and do what God wants them to do, you need certain kind of people to build with. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. And there are, there's something about people who say, God, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Even if it don't make sense. 
You say, God, we're going down to fight 135,000 people with 300. You know, you come to church. Sometimes a lot of people come. Sometimes a lot of people don't come. Right? I remember the church where I, I prayed for salvation. When I first got there, it wasn't that many people. It was less than this. The first time I walked in there, I'll never forget it. September 1984, first time I ever walked in the church. It was less people than this. But I didn't let that stop me from going. That's right. Amen. I didn't let that stop me from coming. Amen. As a matter of fact, once I got there and God spoke to my heart, is God speaking to you today? Is God talking to you today? You see, the thing about faithfulness, the thing about people who love God, who are loyal, who are willing to put in the work, it doesn't matter. You're willing to do whatever it takes. And once I got in there, the, the church was different. The pastor was different. Everything was different. But in my heart, I knew it was what God wanted me. I said, in my, even though I didn't understand, I didn't understand a lot of stuff. I didn't know why they did. I didn't know why they worshiped the way they did. I didn't know why they sang the songs that they did because it was different from what I was used to. But one thing I couldn't get away from, I knew God was dealing with my heart. I knew God was working within my soul. And I said, God, uh, if this is where you want me, uh, I'm going to buckle down. They was, God, I'm willing to do whatever you want, even though it don't make sense. Even though it don't make sense, right? Yes, sir. What are we talking about? Faithful. You know what the word, <laughs> I, uh, let me define the word faithful for you. You know what the word faithful means? Full of faith. That means, faithful means you are full of faith. I want you to ask you, I want to ask you something. God bless the message and the message of my name in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. 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 I want to ask you something. Mm -hmm. Just looking at yourself, thinking of yourself, knowing where you are. Are you full of faith? Because that's what faithful is. A person in, in, in the proper definition means I'm full of faith. I'm full of faith. It also means that I trust God in every aspect of my life. I trust God in every aspect of my life and all that he stands for in his word and the leadership of the Holy Ghost. In other words, every part of my life, I look to God concerning. Every aspect of my life, I trust God. I have faith that God is going to help me. I have faith that God is going to see me through. I have faith that no matter what it takes, and I want to share something with you. I want to share something with you. I've been here, my wife and I arrived here eight years ago. Matter of fact, this week, this week was eight years. My brother-in-law died after we got here. We stopped in Phoenix, Arizona to visit my wife's brother because he was very sick. And a day or two when we got here, he died. She had to fly right back to Arizona. And I stayed here. But I was working for McKesson. I was working for McKesson, delivering medical supplies. Good job. Not a great job, it was a good job. And I let my boss know up front. I said, listen, I moved here. I transferred my job here to pastoral church. Now I'm working here. I appreciate it. But this is what my schedule is. Okay? I told him up front, this is what my schedule is. You said, yeah, you're the pastor, though. No, it doesn't make, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 you're not going to pull that on me. Now, I came here. We have church on Wednesday. We have Bible study on Saturday night. We have church Sunday morning. We have church Sunday night, right? You, you know that, right? How many of those you think I missed? 
You think your schedule's busier than mine? You think you're busier than me, right? Not only did I work a 40-hour week, I had to be here to preach on Wednesday nights. I was tired. I, my body was weary many times, but I still made it. I, why? Because God is important. God is real in my life. And I'm not telling you this to make you feel bad. I'm not telling you this because I'm trying to throw stones at you. I'm trying to tell you when you are faithful, when you get to the point in your life to where God, you are full of faith, you make time for God. You make time for God in every part of your life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. I was tired many times. I would come home. I was so tired. But I still had to come here and preach. Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Get up Monday morning, go to work. Right? Get up. And then through the week, I would get off work. And my wife and I, sometimes I wouldn't even eat dinner. Sometimes I said, we got to go visit. We got to go see people. Uh, because I wasn't able to do it because I was working. Right? Because I was working, I wanted people call me. I can't counsel them because I'm at work. I can't go to the hospital because I'm at work. I can't do this because I'm at work. But when I got out of work, I went to the hospital. When I got out of work, I counsel people. When I got out of work, even though I'd be tired, even though my body would be weary, and on and on and on. So I'm here to tell you, uh, God's looking for 300. Uh, God's looking for 1%. Uh, God's looking for people that will say, I'm going to show up uh, when I don't feel like it. Uh, I'm going to show up uh, if I'm busy. Uh, Yes, 
boyfriend went in and killed the whole family and himself. Couldn't have it. I'm just telling you, if you don't think serving God is real, if you don't think that serving God is serious, just keep on living. Just keep on living. It's time to really make sure we're saved. I said it's time to really make sure that we're saved, folks. Uh, and make sure you're rock solid. Make sure your experience with God is real. Amen. And the, the best way to do that, let me ask you a question. If you were to die right now, where would you spend time? If you were to die right now without any prayer, any opportunity, on any level to pray, where would you spend and um, I was counseling with someone this week. I was counseling with someone this week. And my wife was sitting there, and I was sitting across the table from them, and they was telling me about all this and telling me about all that. And I asked them, I said, are you saved? Because really none of this matters if you're not saved. Do you really know? Well, I... Uh, you know, people always say, well, I accepted Jesus when I was a kid, and I did. Really? And I'm not saying you can't pray for salvation when you're a kid. I'm not saying that. But right now, at this moment, are you saved? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Amen. Yes. Have you repented of your sins? Have you asked him to forgive you? Are you walking in faith? Are you walking in the Spirit? Are you allowing him to be a reality in your life? Do you talk to him every day? Do you spend time with him every day? Do you allow him to lead you and guide you and direct you? And all you know, is, is God real to you? Yes. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 8, For by grace are you saved. That out of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You know what the word being saved means? You know what salvation is when somebody asks you if you're saved? Most people think being saved is just being spiritual. Uh, you know, using cliches. A lot of people walk around using cliches. And um, and um, ain't nothing wrong with wearing a cross, ain't nothing wrong with putting something on your rear view mirror. I'm not I'm not preaching against that. But God means more to me than that. Sure. Amen. Amen. God's real. Amen. I said God is real. Amen. God is so real I made sure my children knew. Yes, sir. I said God is so real I, I, I govern my finances according to God. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. I handle my finances according to the word of God. Yes. Off the top. Off the rip. I don't care what bill I owe. I don't care who I owe. God is paid first. Amen. Amen. And then whatever I have left, we take care of that. And then always pay yourself. Always pay yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't be working all your life and not take it and not be making sure you put something together for you. Amen. You give God 10% and you take and you and you put 10% away for you. And then the real people work with them. Amen. Yes, sir. But you see, you need God to help you. You need God to lead you and guide you. I'm not just going to get out here and just spend willy nilly all over the place. Anyway, you know what the word salvation means? When you, when you really look at it from its real original definition, number one, it means to be healed. Number one, it means that when you ask God to forgive, and cleanse you and wash you. That means he heals you. He heals your emotions. He heals everything that happened to you in your past. He heals you from the effects of everything that you did while you was in sin. He heals you in your heart, your mind, your life, in everything. It's a healing from God. Amen. I know I'm right to read Isaiah 53 and 5. By his stripes. We're what? Healed. By his stripes, we're what? Healed. And not only regular healing, but spiritual healing. Emotional healing. Uh, so many people were abused sexually, 
and mentally and emotionally and physically. We need healing Amen. from God. Amen. And salvation will do that. Mm -hmm. Real salvation. We need cleansing. You know, real salvation means you've been cleansed. That means he takes the precious blood that he shed and he washes you. He cleanses you. He makes you new. Uh, uh, he makes you a new person uh, in your life. The Bible said we confess our sins, 1 John chapter 1. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to what? Cleanse us from all our righteousness. I thank God that he washed me and cleansed me and made me a new person. Amen. 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 I'm talking about being saved. You want to be faithful? You want to be one of the few that God uses? A real experience. And then, one of the other definitions for somebody that's really been saved, it means that you make whole. It means you make whole. And what that means is that when you come to God, you're fragmented. When you come to God, your life has been fractured. When you come to God, you're broken. When you come to God, your life is in pieces. Am I not right? But then, as you, as you get saved, and as you give your heart to God, God starts piecing things back together. No. He starts putting you back together. He starts putting your mind back together. He starts putting your life back together. He starts putting your reputation back together. He starts building your character. He starts building your reputation. People start seeing you in a different light. People start asking you what happened to you. The only thing you can say is that I gave my life to God. He's made me a new person. Soul winning, if it was whatever, if it was a picnic, 
this going on and I got that going on. I was standing on my bed, uh, rigid and not understanding. But I do understand one thing. I worked a full-time job and I still had to come preach. I still had to pray. I still had to read my Bible. I still had to study. I still had to go see people. I still had to go follow up. And all the time, that I didn't show up was when I was sick. And that was rare. Or if I had to go out of town for something. I'm not telling you something that I don't know nothing about. I've been doing this for years. Working on a job and serving God. I'm just calling upon you this morning to pray. Pray with me. I want you to pray with me this morning. And I want you to really honestly assess the situation. And I want you to ask yourself, God, with your help, with your help, I want to step up on it. I want to step up to it all about God, with your help, I want to be able to do things beyond my own, how I feel and what I want to do. I want to be faithful. I want to be full of faith. I want to be used of God. I want to be the kind of person that God, even though it don't make sense, I'm still going to work. I'm still going to labor. I'm still going to do what you want me to do. Yes, Jesus. Will you step into that? Step up to another level. Let's come around the altar. You know, we need to pray. 